Hello, everybody. I'm Broomfield Mayor Pat Quinn, and this is Conversations with Quinn, a community recovery podcast. My vision for this new series is to tell you stories, to tell the stories of the residents and businesses that are facing unprecedented challenges in the wake of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. I found that too many times we hear statistics and generalities. This is our chance to tell personal stories, struggles, and successes. We are in this together and we need to understand each other so we know how to best support each other. My first guests are on the front lines of the COVID-19 response and seeing firsthand how it's impacting our neighbors. Marty Dormish, who's working at the refuge and Sharon Tessier, who you may know as a member of our city council, but is here today in her role as a representative of FISH. So let's talk. Sharon, can you start by telling us more about the huge number of people coming to FISH to support right now? Specifically, how is FISH using the hotel voucher program to help people who are unhoused comply with the stay at home order? Sure, thank you so much and thanks for having us. I'm really excited about this conversation. Um, so first of all, with regard to FISH, um, in the last five weeks or so, we've seen our participants um, increase by about 50%. Our food operations team has been working diligently. We have volunteers from the community who are helping with the food distribution. Um, yeah, over the last five weeks and compared to the numbers to last year at this time, we have increased our participants um, by about 50%. That's about five new clients per day that we're seeing. And um, with regard to the hotel voucher um there's uh you know so two things fish's original mission of feeding families will continue to be one of those missions for for forever um there's also a need for housing and and fish graciously stepped into that role so while the mission of uh fish is feeding families um during COVID, we're also looking at housing assistance. And one of the things, uh, because our public health director, Jason Balling, had declared a medical emergency for um, the stay in place, what happened was people forgot about our friends who are experiencing homelessness. And um, so, we started talking in the community and we wanted to get some shelter in place. And um, I reached out to a couple of different hotels and Town Place Suites Marriott was, has been so gracious, has been gracious of a partner. Um, Jessica Chen, who is the sales, force, uh, sales manager there, uh, worked with us to provide an 18 block room, 18 room block, um, so right now we're housing about 36 different um, friends and neighbors. And um, if I can just tell you about a couple of them who are still working through COVID, um, they called me the other last week and they said, thank you so much. This has been the first time that we've been able to relax and the first time we've been able to save enough money in order to get into an apartment. So that was one of the, the, the great things. And then I have another gentleman who, who stole my heart. He's the, um, he's the, he's been dubbed the, the main guardian of his grandson um, due to complications with the grandson's mom. And um, now he's, He's uh, able to get a Chromebook for his child and they can do schoolwork together for the first time because they're not jumping from hotel to hotel or jumping from place to place looking for Wi-Fi. So those are a couple of the, the stories that um, I'd like to share. And um, is there anything else you want to know? Well, I'm going to ask you a, a couple questions in a minute, but I'd like to hear from, from Marty. Marty, tell me what's going on in the refuge and the people that you're seeing and how you're helping them. Sure. Well, thank you, Pat. And hello to all my fellow Broomfielders out there. 
Uh, as Pat said, my name is Martin Dormish, and I'm a Minister of Community Engagement at the Refuge in Broomfield. And uh, before I get into details, I thought I'd just share a, a bit of background from my end. So the Refuge is a, a Christian community and mission center that serves and comes alongside those who are on the margins of life and faith. And by the way, I, I see myself as in that same category. Uh, we're unique in a lot of ways. Uh, we've kind of transformed the look and feel of our hub, which is in the old Woolrich's showroom on Quay Street. Uh, and while a lot of our regular gatherings are on hold for now, uh, for obvious reasons, we're still working at being and becoming a healthy community through various ways, including our care network, which helps our isolated, sick and homebound friends. Uh, in normal times, we host the Refuge Cafe, uh, which is how I know a lot of our friends who are unhoused. Uh, I help manage that on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays at our facility there on Quay. And at the cafe, we offer free coffee, lunch, and Wi-Fi and encourage our friends and guests to take what they need and give what they can. So due to COVID, we've shifted to an outreach model in which we get requests from people in need. And then once a week, a small team of our cafe advocates gets together appropriately attired, of course, in masks and gloves and keeping six feet apart. Uh, but we prepare customized care packages for delivery to people's doorsteps. So we're really not a big community, but I'm part of a great team. And a core piece of what we do is partner with other faith communities, nonprofits, and government agencies to advocate for and work together on behalf of vulnerable people. So thanks to a recent grant, uh, Sharon was referring to the hotel voucher program earlier, and, and that all came about uh, because of a grant from the Broomfield Community Foundation and contributions from Broomfield Fish, from the city, and from a number of other faith communities, as well as the refuge, including Discovery Christian Church, Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Holy Comforter Episcopal Church, Lutheran Church of Hope, Cross of Christ Lutheran Church, and the St. Vincent de Paul Society through Nativity of Our Lord Catholic Parish and others. So we've been able to help a group of our neighbors in need that often gets overlooked because of this, this great partnership. Um, and so specifically speaking, uh, Sharon mentioned earlier the 36 people who are now in hotel rooms. I think it's been for about five weeks. Is that right, Sharon, to this point? Yes. Okay. So, and they're all people with strong ties to Broomfield. Um, they're our neighbors, and many of them are longtime residents of this area. They've fallen on hard times for a number of different reasons. But like Sharon uh, alluded to earlier, uh, many of them are working, and they all have stories. So I think of several of them. One of them is a middle-aged man who, who was a millionaire, and now he sleeps in his vehicle at night. Um, there's a single grandma who raised her daughter here in Broomfield and who also is in her, her van. Uh, there's another middle-aged man who grew up in Broomfield, went to Broomfield High School, served in the military, and now sleeps outside. So these are our neighbors who are unhoused. And in my estimate, based on the best available statistics that we have, is that the folks that were able to get into hotel rooms to stay at home during the stay at home order, which is about 36 people, um, they only represent about one fourth of our, our local population of people who are unhoused. So those that have been in, in uh, the hotel rooms and received a hotel voucher because of this great partnership have, have expressed to me and to Sharon their appreciation the grateful to the point of tears, yeah. grateful to Jason Balling, like Sharon said earlier, who, who declared a medical necessity for our neighbors who are in house to be in hotel rooms where, because how can you stay at home? How can you obey a stay at home order if you don't have a home? Um, so they're grateful for that. They're grateful for fish. They're grateful for those who are helping make this partnership possible. Um, and, and the really neat thing is that it's not just about their situation, but it's a win-win situation for, for multiple parties because the Town Place Suites, Town Place Suites by Marriott is able to keep some of their employees employed and not have to furlough them 
because of this hotel voucher program. So really there's, there's a, it's a win-win situation. And the last thing that I would add is just that since I moved to Broomfield in 2004, uh, I've, I've heard this story that Broomfield is a great hometown. It's a place where people know each other. It's a place where people pull together when there are needs in the community. And I think this is a perfect example, a lived experience of what Broomfield aspires to be and what Broomfield can be. And it's the kind of community that I want to be a part of. Th thank you, Marty, for those stories. Those are great. You know, and I'll, I guess I'll just make the comment that, uh, that during the campaign, uh, Council Member Tessier, I'll refer to her as, as that right now, had, had a campaign event or, or sponsored a campaign event with Marty down at the refuge on Quay Street or whatever, ever how you say that. And uh, I got to tell you, for me, who lived in, has lived in Broomfield since 81, it was a life changing event to understand the number of people that, that are at need, the unhoused that are at need in Broomfield. And, and, and I will remember that night forever. And which I'll turn to Sharon, and I'll just say, Sharon, that when I first met you, when you first got elected uh, to city council, and I know we're talking a little bit policy now, the uh, that uh, that you've been concerned about housing, you know, not you know affordable housing, attainable housing, the housing the, uh, the unhoused, and I've heard you say that the voucher program, you you've been real concerned about transitional housing, and you're getting some ideas on the voucher program and how it might work. Could you could you share that? Sure, sure, absolutely. And 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 while those conversations have been going on for those in the circles of living um, the housing, you know, our housing advisory and self-sufficiency and, and many of the other community players um, who are in affordable housing, it was still for me like one of those three o'clock in the morning, like, you know, wake up moments where, um, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, this is this is a fabulous situation. I was able to sleep probably for one of the first times in a long time, knowing that many of our friends are, are, are sheltering in place at this point. And then I started thinking about, okay, so we're spending X amount um, to shelter them in a hotel. And then I started thinking, well, apartment complexes are charging maybe you know, um, a fraction of, you know, so for instance, $1,800 a month for one room could probably go a little bit longer. I mean, we have some places that are renting between nine and 1200 for a month. Um, so I was thinking we, you know, we could probably get either more people or get stretch our dollars a little bit further. And so I called Marty um, when it was a reasonable time <laughs> and we could talk about it. And we realized that this could be like the, um, you know, we've been in the gestation phase for a really long time with uh, transitional housing. And now we're starting to actually see like the pregnancy bump you know, and looking at ways in which we could really move forward with transitional housing because we're already seeing it happen with many of the people who are in place. I think what a lot of people don't know is that in order to get into an apartment, you have to have the first month's rent, you have to have the security deposit. Some require the, the last month's rent. And also, many of the uh, management <clears throat> require people to make two and a half to three and a half times the amount of the rent that they're charging. Now, when I was going through all the numbers in my head, I realized, like, you know, we have people who are jumping from hotel room to hotel room, spending between 60 and $70 a night. So they're actually spending more than what they would spend at a apartment and so we are going to start working with different apartment managers and different um, other maybe private landlords to see um, if we can create this transitional housing where we're allowing we're paying a portion and we want our um, friends who are working and have some income to also put a little skin in the game and most of them are willing to do that um, and while Broomfield doesn't have their own hotel vouchers uh, due to the fact that we became a county so late and, and HUD stopped giving out housing vouchers at that time, what we decided to do is 
you know, maybe we could kind of be, have our own housing voucher program um, set up for transitional housing and take that $1,800 for a room. And that could probably last us between three and six months instead of one month. Does that make sense? Am I, am I making sense here? You know, and stretch the dollars and, and stretch the, the wraparound services because we understand that, you know, um, we wouldn't just say here, here you go. There's still some 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 need from our um, our most vulnerable to have some services to stay connected to the veteran services over at HHS to work with workforce um, to work with um, the Center for People with Disabilities. I mean, as Marty mentioned, we are we are housing veterans. There's um, ages between one and a half to over 70 that we're, that we're housing right now in, um, with the hotel voucher. So the hotel voucher program emergency, what we're seeing is a silver lining come through. And in these really uncertain times, this is one of the one things that I'm actually certain about that we can do and that we've done for the past five weeks is shelter people and have really good results. Yeah, and I, you know, when I hear the stories, Marty and Sharon, what I what I think of is that these are 36 individuals, you know, that the human beings that you know that love, get mad, you know, have have great times, and you're giving them stability in their life, you know, at a time when it's just needed. And when you think in terms of, you know, you know, trying to stay at home and protect yourself from this virus, uh, I mean, it's just a wonderful program. So thank you, Marty and Sharon, so much for what you do. And I'll, you know, Marty, you had mentioned earlier that I have been working with the Brooklyn Community Foundation and the Disaster Relief Fund and to try to donate money. In fact, I, I helped direct some dollars there. And so my plea to people that are, that are listening to this is uh, donate to, we, we have the what's called this BOAD Fund and volunteers that are going through, uh, we're trying to get all of it centralized through the uh, Beautiful Community Foundation. So if you want to donate time or if you want to donate money, go to brookfieldfoundation.org forward slash COVID, I think it's just COVID. And so it's brookfieldfoundation.org uh, forward slash uh, COVID donate. So you can have programs like the Refuge and um, Hotel Voucher programs. Thank you so much again, Sharon and Marty. Bye. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Brookfield, for yeah. delivering in this time. Yeah, thanks everyone. Please help, help us help our neighbors. <laughs>